Hi everyone, welcome to Piano Well. Before we start this tutorial, I just want to mention a couple of things. The first is that um, the content of this tutorial you can find in the description to this video down below as to any of my tutorials and just, you know, go there, find a topic that you're most interested about, just click on the time and it will bring you uh, to the part. And the second thing is that I'm going to show you how I analyze and practice this piece using my system, um, using musical means of expression that I develop in my retraining program. So if you're really interested about those things and uh, want to learn them to be able to do what I'm doing here, uh, you're always welcome because it's all for free. Um, I will give you my books, my students' video to follow, my feedback. It's uh, it's all available for you. So <laughs> let's go on and uh, I want to start with um, I guess the most common questions about this piece. The first one is how to control every finger uh, in the chords. Um, second, how to play with full sound and still you know have no tension and the sound would would be just great not the harsh one and the third one is how to make all the lips very accurate the first one the way we control our fingers is by our imagination um, every energy that we create we create in our mind firstly so when it's time to play four parts chord in the right hand and four parts chord in the left hand, like both together, eight notes together, you have to be able to imagine them in your head. Uh, all the problems like messing up with um, uh, notes, you know, the f some, some fingers not playing, it's only because you cannot hear all the chords fully in your head. Uh, so how we do this by my system, first let me imagine every note in timber of strings, violins here, cellos there, and when it comes to the part when we have to play this uh, chord, for example, eight notes together. If this chord, uh, if we come to this chord from the low part, then this chord is going to go to the right. So. If this chord is going to the right, then we start imagining every note sequentially from the left to the right, like this. And yes, I apologize for my untuned piano. Only now when I open the, the cover and I, I start playing this piece with all the bass, I realize how much it's untuned. <laughs> so please forgive me for that. So, um, yeah, come, coming back. So when we imagine all the parts together, we start imagining firstly sequentially, and then we reduce time between notes in our imagination. Again, everything we do is our imagination. Until we hear all the notes from this pace, it comes to this pace. The vertical line and we can hear all the notes evenly right away in our head. Uh, even though you may think that's not really important, that it's better to you know repeat this chord and forth a hundred of times every day, trust me guys, that wouldn't work as much as efficient as this thing. You better develop your polyphonic ear, then it will help you with any fugue of Bach with any polyphonic pieces that you play because you will control every voice um, no matter how many voices you're gonna play simultaneously uh, so this is what I do with this piece <laughs> and I actually spend only two days uh, from scratch to make this piece from scratch to the level I'm playing right now and again I'm saying this I will never say that you know um, for some uh, ambitious motives. I'm just explaining, I'm just showing you guys that everyone can do the same. With this system, it's really a miracle. I mean, 15 years ago, back when I was a teenager, I would spend like 
half a year to make this piece honestly practicing uh, almost every day for six eight hours and still I couldn't play it as well as I did during these two days so the first thing coming back I'm sorry uh, the first thing you will develop your polyphonic ear uh, by doing these exercises every single chord imagine now for sequentially then reducing time and here you go you can hear eight parts right away in your head then when you would play them you would first imagine feel it and your fingers would already know what to play and this is how you control your fingers so they would um, exert in the right amount of exertion you know so the pattern here is uh, right right left now this one I'm making right left 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 because I think there are like two parts the uh, this one and this one so to A to the right so you need to apply uh, freedom of your body intonation technique and be able to imagine every note very loud because you know guys if we want to play loud that doesn't mean that we're gonna strike the key harder <laughs> like to bring more pressure no it all starts again with our imagination if you want to play loud you imagine first loud if you want to say something, you first think about what you're going to say. <laughs> so this is the same thing here. Everything's, make sure that you imagine every note in the chord and then you imagine it super, super loud. And if you think you're very loud, I'm telling you, you just start feeling it's louder. It's just like 1% of what you can actually make. And uh, <laughs> here I think Rachmaninoff make a good favor for all of us because yeah, he did like two forte, fortissima, but then he did three forte. No, 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 that's not enough. You can do even louder. So four forte. <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. So try to imagine ten forte in your head. Now, when you just imagine, and if you don't use weight, if you don't use intonation, then you know, when you play, you would just uh, strike the key very hard and the sound would be harsh. Like, if I'm playing this with any intonation, just use my intonation. First of all, it brings um, very unhealthy tension to my hands. I feel it right away. Um, second of all, the sound is not good enough. So how we express our imagination? We do this through way technique through intonation mm, I, this is actually the the basic of of playing <laughs> and uh, I explain how to achieve this technique in my video lesson called intonation armory technique it's again in description to this video below um, but um, let me just mention that first thing you do you feel the freedom of the body then you gather it special way and then when you express it, you express it through intonation because, you know, if you just feel this, all right, you feel freedom of your body, you know how to gather this all weight, you're ready to play, so you start playing. And then when it's not connected with singing, with distance between notes that you play, then you lose it. I mean, it would be 
stuck somewhere here in your body, but it will never go in the instrument, it will never um, be uh, in your intonation, the way you actually pronounce the sound while playing. So this weight we need to express through intonation. Intonation is how we sing two notes. Uh, we sing it with glissando, with resistance and slow. This simple thing that it's like the mother of everything. <laughs> it's the source of, of, of good playing. And I'm still repeating and I'm telling about this in every single video because this is what most of the students are lack right now. Uh, only some good genius masters know how to do this. Again, they know how to do this naturally. They were never taught to do this because very little amount of teachers know the secret. So, um, let me just show you how you express your weight through singing. For example, I'm playing this, I'm singing this, I'm sorry, without any weight. Oh, right now I'm singing with weight. Oh, I'm not like, um, I'm not trying to make it louder, it's all naturally just because of the feeling that I express through intonation. So this is how I sing every single note, even if I play super fast passages, I still manage to sing the same way, distance between notes. I don't know how it works, I don't have any scientific explanation about this, but trust me, I do this. So when you express your weight through intonation while singing, you do the same while playing, but you sing just internally. So this one... And this is your huge sound with no tension in your hand. My hand is absolutely sleepy. Uh, comparably with like what students would make if you ask them to play forte, something like... I cannot even remember. Okay, let me remember how I used to play. Forte, so they don't really have an idea what to do with this forte, just you know, press the key harder. Uh, that wouldn't work, they only lead to some technique problems, some injuries with your head later on. So, <laughs> I'm talking too much. To summarize, to make the sound huge, to keep your hands free, you need to first be able to imagine every sound very huge in your head. Now, know how to gather weight in your body. And the third and the most important thing is that you express everything through intonation while playing. You sing all the time while playing internally. Now the last thing is uh, how to make um, all the lips very accurate. And uh, I'm using my elbow because it's all about how to prepare the new positions in the lips right so what students again usually do they just you know move the whole arm right away somehow well they definitely don't think how to move their elbow the way we move our elbow is we first make wrist movement and then we move our elbow and elbow would lead the whole hand so I would move my elbow here, then from here again to the right. This one, wrist and elbow to the left. This one, wrist right, elbow right already. Left, elbow left already. Left, elbow right. I'm sorry. When I, uh, in my first day of practicing, that basically looks like this. And because your elbow prepares the position faster than your hand would move over there, that's how you achieve flexibility in, and accuracy in the fast tempos. Um, so 
again, how to make this, how to develop this elbow movement and find position changes correctly and circle the notes. Um, I explained in my video lesson called, I guess, elbow movement, position change, again in description to this video. Another thing is that how you notice and approach all the articulations in the song. I mean, there are so many accents and tenutos and this is exactly what makes the character of this music. Even in the very end, every single note is with accent. And when you play it, it creates some kind of uh, energy of, you know, huge bells. If you call it bells? <laughs> You know, um, when you intonate it with accent, but again, a uh, regular student would just look, okay, these are accents, what that means, and probably that means I need to play with more effort, louder, and something like this. Again, this approach will never work. You need to know exactly how to intonate articulations. I guess articulations are just variant of your intonation. This one, when we sing, oh, this is just a basic, this is our legato. Now, when we want to make, uh, for example, tenuto, uh, we would use weight, and if I sing with tenuto, I sing this way. How to develop this ability I explain in my video lesson called articulations again in description to this video um, so when you intonate this way internally again and you play and the very first three notes comes with um, not the very first <laughs> here three notes comes with the note that you're intonating then comes staccato boom so that changes a lot because usually Susan's just like nothing special. So if I play with Tenuta, again my hands will naturally go the way. They're supposed to go to produce to note on the piano. Now staccato thing. Again here. This is the uh, staccato with the crochet, so it's not super staccato, but still. And to note that. painful intonation right away. Now let's come back to accents. If we make accents, what we do, we uh, accelerate the second part of distance between notes and we um, bring more weight at the same time. Like I said many times, accent is a mix of staccato and tenuta. Um, so if I sing this with accent, this is our accent and when I start again I'm not just starting though do 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 I'm making with accent articulation oh, oh, oh. and it, this gives the feeling again I'm playing the way I'm playing not because I'm talented I'm, I'm not talented at all <laughs> I just have a super great desire to play well, and I think I'm quite smart. Okay, sorry. So, uh, when I'm 
when you can feel the emotions through my playing is not because I'm genius, but because I'm intonating it with right articulations that gives this energy to, to the sound and that uh, this energy you can feel. Uh, so in the very end, when I intonate everything with articulations, so... fingers to, you know, to tighten the key in the right way. So these are articulations guys. <laughs>
and this color of harmonies. Now, I would also mention about musical speech here because, you know, uh, musical speech is how we feel uh, intervals because each interval has its own energetical level um, and there are a lot of um, seconds in this piece, especially in the middle part, this one. So if you know how to feel this second through intonation, again, one more time, just understanding that this is second will never work for you and you need to feel this and when you feel it we know that second is a very painful very longing intonation then uh, when you play it it gives the feeling to the music and also when you when you combine it with tenuta and so you combine musical speech and tenuta it's so damn painful <laughs> so I recommend it with genius here um, and when you go to the up you get this one all by seconds to feel this one. Sometimes he go through, you know, like for example here, he goes to four up, again four up, again four ups, and we know that the fourth is energetical, it's like called to action, so he goes from this like um, very painful blurry feeling to some breakthrough. And of course he's going through this tears of despair in the very end um, yeah so um, just want to make sure again that everything that I teach in my training course including musical speech is so important in the pieces that you play whether it's just like twinkle star or a mind of concerto <laughs> it's all works in the same level so <laughs> talk about phrasing here so uh, it's very important how you define uh, the motives the phrases and sentences in this piece and uh, what I suggest is that one motive is half of the bar so basically this is one motive and this is second motive and this pattern remains the same um, in the A parts, B part is different. So in this part you need to understand where is the main interval and again this main interval you don't just understand but you also apply weight, you emphasize it with your energy through weight, through intonation, that's why you're getting interval at the very end of the motif, you're getting this uh, very relief um, and expressive motif. Now every motif we're gonna submit to the phrasing, so one phrase is gonna have two motifs, for example here, this is more important motif and this is less important motif. You get more important. He wrote the small slurs. I believe he did that, not the editor. But that's quite nice because if you intonate those, so like small, let's call them sub motif, then this one's my voice. when the main intervals comes to the very first note. We know we have two types, right? The first one is when we comes to the end, which is more 
on each row and the second one when we start from the main and all the Russian composers and including Rachmaninoff use this second type of motif very frequent because I don't think I don't know maybe it's more I don't know they just love this especially in the middle part uh, he even wrote this verse again so one what motif for example here with one bar and he starts from the top so he goes and then small it's not like intonation that you get. Um, so again about this type of thing, how to develop this sense of phrasing, all the motifs, sentences I explain in my video lesson called articulations down below to this video. So uh, yeah let's come back to, f to the phrase. So in this phrase the first motif will be more important and second one less. Now we also need to unite two phrases together into one sentence. So one sentence here will be two bars where I'm still not sure. I think you can try and play it around how you want. You can make the first bar, the first phrase more important and the second less or the second more and first less. So if you make the second more, then first one will be less. And second one, you know, just like repeating in the in the trends, you know, less important. And this one more, this one less. Again, now first motif less important. Second one, and we're going from the top. First important. Second less, first and third less. There are three motifs in the phrase. Then less. And you see, it's like the music starts flowing naturally. It's very nice. <laughs> So let's talk about form here as well. Um, feeling of form. Okay, what the form is about? Form is about that um, every part has its own structure meaning. Like you know, where is the beginning of the music? Where is development? Where is rising to climax? Where is the climax itself? Um, how many these parts in the piece? So. Uh, again, when you want to express these uh, sensations, you do this through intonation. I will show you how it works. In one interval, I can sing this with different uh, meaning. With beginning, rising climax, climax and um, conclusion. And this is how it's going to look like. actually is that um, this thing changes your first of all sound and second of all vibrations mm, this energy changes vibration so when you play then that would change your performance as well for example the first part this one I make it 
as introduction. Now this one. This is beginning. Here is development. This one rising to climax. And this is three piano, very intense combination. I don't know how to say that in English though. Well, anyways. And on this one, conclusion. Alright, so we have the first page, and it's already there is already a little story. Now, the second part, B section, also have the same pattern. It starts with, um, well, I'm making this way. Beginning, development, rising to climax, climax. Now again, rising to climax and climax, so again rising to climax. for me to keep combination for so long and then again I start the last part with introduction and here we go the same pattern becomes very bright, your beginning part becomes less intense. So uh, for the listener and for yourself as well, it gives the feeling of wholeness of the piece. <laughs> and uh, for example, in this piece, you know, there are three parts. And each part would have this like beginning combination, beginning combination. But again, even in this pattern, one to three, the third one is more important. So you can imagine how much you need to hold on your energy in the very beginning. Because it's just the beginning, it's just the first part. <laughs> and that's why you would, you know, you wouldn't just like give everything. You would control yourself, control your body, control your energy. That's super important in every performance. Otherwise, it's, it, it will become very boring because everyone will just play on one energy level, so the culmination wouldn't be as bright as it's supposed to be, you know, and without culmination there is no wholeness, as we know. So. <laughs> Again, about form, and explain in my video lesson called form. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
So feel this pulsation again, not just, you know, like I'm playing, I'm feeling it faster. No, you need to connect it with emotional image. You don't just feel it faster, you feel it more, you know, agitated, <laughs> more animated, more, more in, um, worry, more in, anxiety, in, with more anxiety, I don't know how to say. And then when you come back, sorry, <laughs> uh, you come back again to with very slow and imperative, you know, pulsation. Uh, very interesting thing, he never actually wrote any written nota. Well, anyways. Uh, so, uh, feeling pulsation throughout the whole piece while playing is so important. It's just for you to, um, to gather the piece together, it, it really helps. Alright guys, I hope you didn't waste your time, you enjoyed the video. And if you want to inspire someone as well with this video, just like it and that will share my videos, so uh, better chances for other people to find it on YouTube. <laughs> Alright, if this video didn't inspire you, don't do anything. <laughs> just move on. Okay, um, well, I wish uh, everyone have a great day and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.